Appreciate you being with me today. Hope you're having a good day. We're going to be thinking about the Red Sea crossing. Once again, we're going to be looking at it somewhat from Pharaoh's perspective or considering Pharaoh. Today's hymn is the hymn, Prepare to Meet Thy God. Careless soul, why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear you not the invitation, oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, careless soul, oh, heed the warning, heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone, will oh, soon yes, be your gone. life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment, oh, how sad to face the judgment, oh, face the judgment. unprepared. unprepared. Careless soul. Now, let's turn to the book of Exodus, and in Exodus chapter 14, as the Lord speaks to Moses, and they were going to go and camp by the Red Sea. Verse 3, Pharaoh would say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, the wilderness has closed them in. The Lord tells Moses, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Verse 5 now. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also he took six hundred choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with the captains over them. And we know what's going to happen. They are going to meet their demise. There is a word. I'll, I'll share it with you. And I, I thought we might dwell on this, but I don't. I think we'll just look at it more simply. But I wanted to share later on in the account when, when they are drowned. And you might notice just in verse 24 came to pass in the morning watch, the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud. Don't forget about that pillar of fire and cloud, how there were times it was before them, there were times it was behind them. He was protecting them. So as he looks down, he troubles the army of the Egyptians, and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for the Lord." fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And, the Mo and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. When the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. I was just thinking about that phrase, they were fleeing into it. Don't know if there's anything to be made, made of it, but I, my, I guess my point is sometimes as I imagine that, the question is where were they in the, where were they? And I was just visualizing. Anyway, might just think about it. Um, like I said, let, let's just come back. I'll, I'll stop blabbering. And, and let's just come back, and as as Pharaoh's hearts is hardened, and, and we think about his his demise, and we we reflect on our hymn, "Careless Soul, Why Will You Linger? Prepare to Meet Thy God." And Egypt, God had said, "I am going to judge their gods," and that's what God did with each one of the plagues. Uh, of course, the last one, at least in the ten plagues, the firstborn. And if Pharaoh was God, then Pharaoh's son was God. And the true and l the true God strikes him dead. And he's not done yet because Pharaoh and his armies, uh, of course, as they meet their demise here. So let's just think about meeting meeting our Maker. Pharaoh obviously did not think this is what. He didn't think this was how it was going to all play out, but this is how it's playing out. And we recognize that the race is not to the swift. 
that at some point we will meet our maker. It might be when we are in, in our youth. It may be when we are older. It may be, we, we may see it coming. We may have some sort of debilitating disease or things along those lines. We may never see it coming. We may, we don't know. We don't know. But what did Pharaoh have? And it's the same thing we have. Pharaoh had opportunities to do the right thing. And we have opportunities to do the right thing. Today is the day of salvation. Pharaoh, from the very beginning, it does not start with plagues. The account starts with Moses and Aaron coming coming to him saying, Let the people go. They don't belong to you. And Pharaoh would not do it. Who is who is God? And the plagues would commence. But Pharaoh had opportunities to do the right thing. The Lord wants us to take advantage of those opportunities because we don't know how many we'll have. You know, they finally say, let's as as they're chasing after the Hebrews, they finally say in the account we read. It's time to go back. It was too late. The Lord had the Lord had another show of strength. Take advantage of opportunities while you have them. Now, the reason that I wanted to read those first few verses because Pharaoh and his servants, they said, "Why have we done this we, that we have let Israel go from serving us? They're losing their servants." As we follow the Lord, I think sometimes people and we ourselves perhaps we we ask ourselves what well, what are we going to have to give up the rich young ruler what was he going to have to give up for example and we may we may need to ask that what what am i going to have to give up peter we have left all But we need to see, whatever we give up, it does not compare to what we will gain. Peter, we have left all. What have you gained? We have come to know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You have the words of eternal life. The rich young ruler, yes, he would lose prosperity. What would he gain? Sell what you have, give it to the poor. Come, follow me. Gain the Lord. You're in fellowship with the Lord, and you have the promise of eternal life. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Pharaoh and his servants. Oh, we're, we're, we're losing our servants. We're losing our slaves. We're, we're losing our labor force. Well, what will you gain? Remember what Jesus said. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. But whoever tries to save his life They'll lose it. And that's what we have to understand even today. What do we need to do? We need to be wise. We need to be circumspect, looking around, frankly, seeing the handwriting on the wall, to use another picture from Scripture, from the book of Daniel. And, And I was thinking about Pharaoh and his armies and what they saw. And at whatever point they're at whatever point they're in the midst of the Red Sea. And talks about the Lord taking the wheels off their chariots. But even as they entered the Red Sea, and the ground was dry for a time, talks about how those things were happening by a, by a strong wind. You know, you, you, you march in, and you know your God's not doing this. It's their God. Recognize what the Lord is doing as you have the wind and you have the waves built up around you and you have all of this happening, let him go. Let him go. Be wise. Take advantage of the opportunities you have. I know his Pharaoh's son died. He may have had other children. I can't remember if it says, but you're not dead yet, but you're about to be. So, let him go. When we come, 
as we come to the Lord. And what drives us to come to the Lord is be wise. Look around. Look around. The world is not the answer. Worldliness is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. So, follow him. Follow him and take advantage of the opportunities you have. And by following him, I don't mean like Pharaoh followed after them, by the way. Not what I mean. I mean obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Rather than having a hard heart, be tenderhearted and listen to the Lord's call. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.